there are varying views about the expected content and how that could run counter uh, to the priorities of the palace. What's your view on that? Well, listen, I think that Harry and Meghan are, uh, are in a difficult situation. I mean, they were criticised for not making uh, you know, public or private statements straight away when the King and uh, the Princess of Wales made their cancer statements. There is an awful lot going on in the palace that we've discussed over the last few weeks. Of course, the King is still undergoing his treatment for cancer. We have the Princess of Wales taking an extended leave of absence as well because of her chemotherapy. And Harry and Meghan have kind of just got to get on with their job. But we don't really know what their jobs are at the moment. We're still awaiting what these new Netflix series would be and a lifestyle project for Meghan, a polo um, executive producer role for this new polo show on Netflix for Harry. However, it hasn't really gone too well for the Netflix and Spotify deals. I mean, Meghan sort of uh, being let go after one series for archetypes on Spotify. The Netflix series hasn't really um, sort of stood the test of time. So... Listen, I think that they'll have to sort of, Joe, go back to the drawing board. Their priorities are very, very different to the Palace. The Palace are trying to sort of pick up the pieces of, other, of the last few months. So they're, uh, they're moving in very, very different directions, that's for sure. Now, back to the late Queen, and we know she loved horse racing. It was one of her great passions. But we understand the new King is eager to continue uh, with the sport of King's tradition. Is that right? Well, he is. I mean, of course, he's had a sort of a, a very scaled down schedule over the last few months undergoing his cancer treatment. We've had only seen him sparingly at public events, meeting the prime minister or other members of the public in very, very small groups at Buckingham Palace. However, we did see him at Easter Sunday uh, in, in a larger group outside Windsor Castle. I am told there is definitely an appetite to get him back to more public duties over the next couple of months. And that is interesting that you know, we could see him at a Trooping the Colour. We could see him at D-Day commemorations. But definitely, he does want to go to Royal Ascot if he is well enough to do those other events as well. So hugely positive news, I think, from the Palace. And I think we should take that as sort of a, a ray of sunshine to hold on to because it's been a pretty, pretty testing time for the King and the rest of the Royals this year already. Now, Russell, lastly, and I never miss an opportunity to talk about Princess Anne. We know she's hardworking and popular. But this article from our own ABC here in Australia shows she's getting, I suppose, a broader recognition for her work. Well, certainly. I mean, you know, there, there's no stranger to, uh, to Princess Anne rolling up her sleeves and getting on with the job. And she's definitely had to do that more so over the last couple of weeks. And um, yeah, there, there has been sort of a missing of members of the, uh, the royal family over the last few months, certainly with the King and Princess of Wales. Prince William has course, taking an extended leave over Easter. However, it is good that Princess Anne is getting the recognition she deserves. She's no... You know, um, issue with her being called the trusted lieutenant of the king. Certainly, people in the palace would say that the king definitely relies on her for counsel and for maintaining the business of the monarchy, the less glamorous side that we don't see. However, she's still very, very highly respected, and I think that uh, both you and I see it in spades, don't we? Absolutely, we do. And Russell Myers, pleasure as always. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks, Karen.